Hey everyone, welcome to Kittatinny Woodcraft. My name is Jim. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a freestanding haul tree using no pocket screws and all just connected by wood glue. So let's get going. As with all woodworking projects, good and bad, you obviously have to start with the wood. So in this one, I actually bought eight foot long by 20 inch wide boards. And I first cut them down using my circular saw into larger chunks and then refined everything into its final size with the table saw. Once these pieces were all cut down to the correct size, I then took a jigsaw and cut out all the arches that made up the feet of the hall tree. A helpful note I want to add in here is that I was actually looking for wood online for about two weeks before I actually ended up buying it because it kept saying it was out of stock. And when I ended up actually going into the store, they ended up having even more options because they never showed this eight foot long board on their website. So even though we've all grown accustomed at this point to shopping online and kind of staying out of the stores, it sometimes is helpful to go in and just look to see what the inventory is on the shelf instead of what's online. Here's an example of the arches I mentioned earlier in the video that I just hand cut with the jigsaw after marking the cuts as you can see with the pencil lines. Also to make the dados for this project, I just used my table saw and made multiple passes through the width of the board through each pass and then cleaned up with the chisel. This is a really easy way that you don't have to spend $40, $50 for a dado stack blade. And as you're about to see in a second, it still gives you a perfect fit to fit a board into. And with all the pieces cut and shaped, we get move on to the always fun glue up montage. And for this one to reinforce the miter joints on this seat part of the hall tree, I just put biscuit joints on and then clamped everything to within an inch of its life. And then once it was dry, moved on and repeated the same process on the opposite side. And to do the back of the hall tree, it, everything was glued together and held in place until the glue dried with brad nails. Unfortunately here, my brad nailer decided to jam up and shot the weirdest brad nail I've ever seen. It folded in half before it even entered the wood. So I am currently flailing about trying to get that piece out. However, when my brad nailer is not trying to do modern art, this is a perfect way to attach all these pieces to the back and keep everything nice and tight until the glue dries. With the back now fully dried, I went ahead and put the sides and the top on of the back of the hall tree. And this was just all butt joints reinforced with biscuit joinery. The one thing I will have to say for anyone else who's trying to build one of these is after you do the flat back, the step I skipped was to sand everything on that back before I glued up these sides. And that would have made it a lot easier if I would have done that instead of going back and trying to sand the back with the sides and top on. So just keep that in mind when you're, if you're doing this project yourself. Now that the back of the hall tree is glued up, I can move back to the seat of the hall tree. And as you can see, all the shelves are held in place with glue and had to be tapped in after the top and sides dried together. One thing to keep in mind is as you're going on these projects, you want to make sure you keep everything in square. And the best way I've found to do that is, as you can see, just measuring corner to corner. As long as those two measurements are the same, you know the item is in square and you can keep moving on in your project. So 
So here's my workaround for not using any pocket holes since I don't have one, a pocket hole jig. And two, I feel like you don't get as strong of a bond with pocket screws as you do with this method. And it's simply by drilling in at an angle and then filling the holes in with dowel rods covered in glue into those spots. And I did this in about 10, 12 places all around the bottom of the hull tree. And I feel like this gave me a much stronger joint and allowed for a freestanding hull tree. And doing this method also allows you to take full advantage of the dowel rods because once they're in, as you see, I just simply took a flush cut saw, cut it down, and then simply just took a little sandpaper and cleaned it up. And you have a flush mount that you don't have to fill back in, unlike you do when you have pocket holes. And here's the hall tree fully painted. I figured we all know what paint looks like as it's drying, so I didn't need to show you any of that. This is two coats of primer, two coats of actual paint, and two coats of polycrylic, which I used as a sealant. So I'm going to skip ahead to actually mounting the coat hooks. And for that, the main trick you have is to lay painter's tape where you want to put the hooks and then make all your markings on that. That way you don't put anything onto your finished product and you have a lot easier time cleaning up and you don't have to worry about any blemishes. And once everything's marked out with a little sad looking face in this situation, you can go ahead and drill, remove the painter's tape, and then just attach the coat hook. And then using the painter's tape technique and careful measurements, you can see you get perfectly lined up coat hooks. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Subscribe to my channel, that way you never have to remember how to spell Kittatinny again. And leave any comments or questions you have below. And once again, thank you for watching my video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you.